Okay, Stacey, older people, uh, what's the agenda here? What do we need to do? I think people might be surprised that older adults are a high risk population for drowning. So I think it's about getting, getting that message across. Um, we know that people are living longer, more active lives, which is fantastic. And we know that um, swimming is good for health, um, physical health and mental health as well. Um, and especially over the last 12 months, um, we have seen you know, people in lockdown and things and needing activities to do, uh, which create sort of both uh, mental and, and physical health benefits and social health benefits. Um, but unfortunately, what we have found with older people is that there may be medical conditions that come into play, uh, medications as well, that can increase uh, drowning risk. Um, ab absolutely. And so do you, do you recall, I, I believe you would have been part of the thinking here, the previous strategy said 55 plus, and this strategy has gone to 65 plus. Um, do, you, do you recall the rationale for that? Can we share that with people? That's a tricky one because you you're... <laughs> I can say that is a tricky one because it has bounced back and forth. And I think once we have looked at um, the statistics, we are actually seeing more people over the age of 65 uh, drowning, unfortunately. Um, and I do think there is a few people who, who thought 55 uh, was possibly a little bit young uh, to be called a, an, an older person, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of the drowning statistics, we're certainly seeing that age group go up. And when we looked at um, you introduced uh, this session and said that children had um, met the, the vision of, of a 50% decrease. Um, unfortunately, we haven't seen that same decrease in older people. And in fact, we have seen um, some of those statistics do go up. So it's certainly an area that, that we're looking at and we need to look at. Um, the focus has very much been on children and rightly so. Uh, but how do we engage um, older people? And, it, and there's probably some of the same challenges that that uh, exist with uh, young males in terms of trying to change perhaps a mindset. People have been doing water activities for a long time, uh, boating, for example. And I know that the maritime safety sector has also identified older people as a, as a key demographic for getting those safety messages across. Um, as I said, people have been doing these things for a long time, but may not have the skills or um, maybe their bodies aren't keeping up um, in terms of um, you know, just being more fragile, perhaps, um, maybe not as uh, balanced on their feet, those types of things. Um, so I think it's reintroducing perhaps ways to refresh skills, um, getting in the water in a safe way. And, you know, some of the safety messages that we push, so wearing a life jacket, going with a friend, all those types of things are still um, relevant for this age group as well. Yeah, one of the things we were trying to do, I think, is that the previous strategy in the consultation process, and, and Dr. Amy Peden will remember this, is we were so accommodating of everyone's viewpoint um, that actually we ended up with this strategy that targeted almost everything. Um, and so we set about in this strategy to try and be more focused, uh, particularly when it came to a life stages approach. Um, and um, and yeah, that 55 plus was too broad. There were sort of three or four different life stages in that cohort. And so the, the, the thinking here was to try and narrow it down into 65s. So it's not saying we're forgetting the 55 to 65s, but, but that was sort of, this is the tactics of, of the strategy. Um, Richard, one of the things that this area signals quite strongly is partnerships. And Adam spoke a lot about collaboration. Um, who are the logical places to, where are the logical places to partner if we want to reduce drowning in 65 year olds? Well, I think just going to the comment before about why do we do 55? Part of it was because preparation for the older years, you know, we're kind of saying you need to starting to be think about, you know, what you're doing in your older years, because we were seeing a number of, you know, tree changes, kind of coastal change, uh, people moving to those locations, which increase their risk. So I think, you know, based on that, I think the superannuation funds are, uh, are actually one of the key groups that we should be working with. Not only you know, do they have some money to put towards it, but they um, hopefully have a kind of a community good that they want to keep and look after their members as part of that, that process. And everybody's got to be in a super fund. So you know, while there are a number of super funds out there, it's, it's a really important aspect of keeping people healthy, enjoying your retirement. You know, there'd be nothing worse than getting to, to retirement and you can't enjoy it you know, for, for whatever reason. So I think that's a key group as well, including you know, some other groups out there um, like ARPIA, which uh, ensures older people because um, they're less risky from an insurance perspective as well. 
so I think that that's really important. And I, I do think that, you know, as people prepare, there are these life changing moments, you know, as you move from school to, to um, work, as, as you move through those kind of life stages, this kind of 65 age group, you know, we're seeing people retire slightly later, but what they're doing is, is moving to areas where they want to have this dream of, of what they're going to do in that space, be it more exercise around water, be it on a boat, be it, you know, I'm going to live near it, be it doing more fishing. So, so I think this is a really key group um, as part of it. And I think the other thing is we do need to be working with groups like pharmacists. You know, the multiple medication issue is a significant issue, not just for drowning, um, but across the board from a force perspective. But I don't think people pick up on that, that, you know, you're going to be impacted by the medications that you're on, that you do need good health advice. Um, getting in the water is actually really good for you. It's a low impact. So for those that have um, lower mobility, you know, sore knees and hips and that type of thing, then being in the water is a great way of, of doing that. And it doesn't necessarily also need to be swimming freestyle laps. There might be other things that you can kind of do in the water that keep you healthy and, and well as part of that process. I think it's also another area where we need to be, be bringing in the older age group. I mean, the Grey Medallion, I think has been a really good, I've just seen it pop up here again in Townsville that um, people are interested in. There's lots of people going along to it. And I think it's that multifaceted thing about, you know, I've got grandkids. So again, what do I do to keep them safe around the water? Hang on, I also want to make sure that I'm getting some really good exercise um, and keeping fit as part of this process. Uh, plus, I really enjoy the water. It's something that I did in my younger years and would like to get kind of back into it. So, so there's lots of little different angles that we can yeah. um, get into it. And as Stacey pointed out, we haven't seen the numbers come down. I think it's a challenge for us. Um, and a lot of these older age groups also do own swimming pools. We see a number of cleaning pools that fall in and other sorts of issues around it. So it's complex, but there are a lot of partners and a lot of things we can actually do to address it. Great. Thank, thank you. Um, there's lots to do. I think there's the Silver Salties program. There's, um, there's uh, Swim Ready. There's any number of sort of uh, interventions in this space. And I do think that um, uh, most of the people that are in aquatic centres on the webinar will, will, will recall that, you know, aqua aerobics is booming. Adult Learn to Swim is also booming. So, you know, there's a number of areas that are highly accessible to try and build some skills in those later, uh, later years of, of life.